Hello, this is Dr. David Gorelick for the Psychopharmacology Institute. I am clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland, and a longtime addiction psychiatrist and clinical psychopharmacologist. Alcohol use disorder, which I'll refer to you as AUD, is one of the most prevalent psychiatric conditions in the United States. An estimated 29 million U.S. residents had AUD in 2022. The FDA has approved three medications for the treatment of AUD, disulfiram, acamprosate, and naltrexone. However, none of these medications is broadly effective or widely used. Disulfiram was first approved in 1951, but is very little used currently because of severe, potentially life-threatening effects when it is taken together with alcohol. Acamprosate and naltrexone have better safety profiles and tolerability, but only modest efficacy. So pyramid is an FDA-approved anticonvulsant. It is not FDA-approved for the treatment of AUD, but is commonly used off-label for this purpose. Several randomized, double-blind clinical trials, so-called controlled clinical trials, found that topiramate was significantly better than placebo in treating AUD. Controlled clinical trials are the gold standard for evaluating medication efficacy. These positive findings had led topiramate to be recommended as a second-line treatment of AUD by some clinical practice guidelines. In fact, topiramate is used more often in the treatment of AUD than are the three FDA-approved medications. However, there has never been a high-quality head-to-head comparison of topiramate with any of the three FDA-approved medications. Morley and colleagues remedied this gap by conducting a 12-week controlled clinical trial comparing oral topiramate with oral naltrexone in the treatment of AUD. The secondary aim of the study was to evaluate the influence of two genetic variations in genes for neurotransmitter receptors on the response to these medications. Previous studies suggested that specific variants of the gene that codes for a type of glutamate receptor and of the gene that codes for the mu opioid receptor were associated with a better response to topiramate and to an altrexone, respectively. The trial was conducted in Australia and enrolled 147 patients with current AUD and heavy drinking. AUD was defined by DSM-5 criteria. Heavy drinking was defined as average consumption of at least 30 standard drinks per week for men and at least 25 standard drinks per week for women over the month prior to study screening. In addition, all participants had to average at least two heavy drinking days per week. A heavy drinking day was defined as at least five drinks for men and at least four drinks for women. 72 patients were randomly assigned to receive topiramate titrated over six weeks to a maximum of 200 milligrams daily. 75 patients were randomly assigned to receive naltrexone up to 50 milligrams daily. Assignment to each medication was stratified by genotype to allow for comparisons by genotype within each medication group. All patients received 20 to 30 minutes of medical management at each weekly visit. This involved education by the clinician about the symptoms and harms of problematic drinking, the benefits of treatment, and encouragement of medication adherence. The study found that topiramate and naltrexone had similar efficacy. There were no significant differences in alcohol consumption outcomes between the naltrexone and topiramate groups. By the end of the first week, both groups had greater than 60% decreases from baseline in heavy drinking days per week and in drinks per drinking day, and the decreases persisted for the remainder of the study. Both groups experienced significant decreases in the intensity of self-reported alcohol craving, with the decrease being about 25% greater in the topiramate group. The genotype differences were not associated with any significant differences in response to medication. Also, there were no significant group differences in medication adherence or tolerance, although the types of side effects differed between topiramate and naltrexone, as would be expected. The rigorous design and conduct of the study make me confident in the validity of its findings. For example, self-reported alcohol consumption was generally confirmed by blood testing for the alcohol biomarker phosphatidyl ethanol, and patients' guesses of their medication assignment were no better than chance. In the absence of a placebo control group, it is theoretically possible that the observed improvement was due largely to the weekly patient education sessions, which are not available in many clinical settings. However, I doubt that this was actually the case, given the prior placebo-controlled trial showing efficacy separately for topiramate and for naltrexone. Patient characteristics in this study generally resembled those of a typical psychiatric clinic population. Middle-aged men and women with about one-third having major depressive disorder and or generalized anxiety disorder. Patients with any other substance use disorder, except for nicotine or tobacco, or with current opioid use were excluded. So these results might not be as applicable to a specialized substance use disorder clinic. 
The bottom line is that topiramate seems as effective as naltrexone for the treatment of AUD. Topiramate might be appropriate for first-line treatment, especially if reduction in alcohol craving is an important consideration, and if the patient can tolerate a six-week dose titration period to minimize side effects. Thank you for listening to this quick take.